Hello, very good evening to you. Welcome to ITV News. This is Wednesday's calendar. Yes, hello. Thank you for joining us. And here are tonight's main stories. As Uber is given the go-ahead to operate in York, fears from disability campaigners that the city will become even less accessible for them. Time after time, wheelchair users cannot get a taxi. They've said that accessibility and equalities is one of their four prime goals for this administration, and yet they make a decision like this. Remembering Rob Burrow, the special shirt designed by a fellow motor neurone disease campaigner to honour the rugby league legend. To see the players wearing the top I designed will make me feel very proud. I hope lots of the shirts are sold to help make money that will go towards the Rob Burrow Centre for MND. Join us as we go behind the scenes at the Yorkshire Sculpture Park as a major new exhibition is installed. And weather-wise, we've had a ridge of high pressure that is set tomorrow to give us more sunshine and warmer weather. But how long can it last? I have all the details for you before the end of the programme. Yes, good evening from John and from me. First tonight to the outcry from disability campaigners in York who fear the accessible taxis they rely on will be forced out of business after the ride-hailing firm Uber was given a licence to operate in the city. Yes, they say there's been no commitment from Uber to provide the, the kind of taxis that, for example, can carry wheelchairs. But the local council says the firm was already doing business in the city anyway, with Uber drivers licensed elsewhere choosing to come into York to pick up fares. Michael Billington reports. Flick Williams prefers a traditional approach to hailing a cab, even though taxis in York are now available at the touch of a button. The council's just given a licence to Uber to operate in the city, but with no obligation to provide accessible vehicles for wheelchairs. They've said that accessibility and equalities is one of their four prime goals for this administration, and yet they make a decision like this. Accessible taxi drivers rely on able-bodied passengers to supplement their income to keep them on the road, but by introducing more competition for fares, they say they're being forced out of the market. Council taken a one step forward where they actually got these electric vehicles, wheelchair accessible vehicles, but they taken two steps backwards uh, by uh, making difficult for them to operate vehicle the eventually going to drive them out of the business. This is kind of not level playing field and is unfair competition which clearly got overlooked by the council. It's already having an impact uh, to the point where uh, my takers have gone down a third uh, just recently and with uh, what the council have done uh, I'm expecting to lose another third on top of that. Could it put you out of business? I think it could. If it doesn't change rapidly, well, it could be worth not coming to work. The council says Uber was already operating in the city using drivers and cars licensed by other councils and says now local drivers can start working with the company too. Uber says it already offers accessible taxis in other big cities around the UK and would consider doing the same in York if enough drivers with wheelchair vehicles signed up. I'll believe it when I see it, because they only do that in really, really big cities. Um, so I don't, I don't see it happening. Time after time, wheelchair users cannot get a taxi. It may be hailed as a modern way of catching a cab, but campaigners say in practice giving Uber a licence to operate is in fact a step back for disability rights in the city. Michael Billington, ITV News in York. Well, next tonight, a man accused of the murder of a father from Sheffield has been described as using his car as a weapon at his trial in the city. 46-year-old Chris Marriott died on the 27th of December last year while trying to help a woman lying in the street in the Burngreave area of Sheffield. Well, today, a witness said he saw the car driving on the wrong side of the road and then aiming at Chris. 24-year-old Hassan Janga denies the charge. Adam Fowler was in court. On day two of the trial, the jury heard from eyewitnesses, including local resident James Hammond. 
He described how the car that hit 46-year-old Chris Marriott was, in his words, used as a weapon. He described how it was driven on the wrong side of the road at an inappropriate speed and was aimed at Chris and a young woman before it ploughed straight through them. It came to a stop about a foot away from his front front door. The court was told already how 46-year-old father of two, Chris Marriott, had been out for a Christmas walk with his family when he spotted a young woman on the floor and tried to help on the 27th of December on College Close in Burn Grieve. This afternoon, the court also heard from local resident Lisa Poulton, who described how, moments before the collision, a local family had been shouting, arguing, pulling hair, pushing and fighting in the street before she heard a loud bang and saw the car that hit Chris Marriott on the grass verge. Hassan Janga denies the murder and manslaughter of Chris Marriott, but has pleaded guilty to causing his death by dangerous driving. Adam Fowler, ITV News, Sheffield Crown Court. The family of a woman who died in a crash in North Yorkshire have paid tribute to their beautiful, quirky daughter. 38-year-old Elizabeth Cross died at the scene on the A19 in Easingworld last Tuesday when a Skoda and a red Vauxhall Corsa collided. The driver of the Skoda, a woman in her 40s, was arrested on suspicion of causing death by dangerous driving and has been released under investigation. Councillors in Leeds have approved plans to close three Little Owls nurseries in the city. The branches in Gipton North, Kentmere and Chapel Allerton are due to shut to save £900,000 from the council budget. Hundreds of parents signed petitions opposing the closures, arguing they could lead to higher nursery costs. But the council says there are sufficient alternatives. The bid to reopen Doncaster Sheffield Airport has been delayed as Doncaster Council seeks to find a new investor. The airport closed in November 2022 after its owner Peel Group said it was no longer financially viable. A new investor was due to be announced this spring, but at a meeting today the council said a decision would not be made until later in the summer. People living in the Holt Park area of Leeds have been told to check if their mail was delivered after several post boxes were stolen. Two Royal Mail boxes were taken from Holt Park Road and Kenworthy Close. Police are urging anyone who used those mailboxes in the days before the 4th of June to check if their letter actually arrived. Well, lots more to come on calendar tonight, but after us, it's the ITV Evening News at 6.30. Let's find out what's on the programme with Lucrezia Millerini. Coming up, inflation falls back down to the Bank of England's target for the first time in nearly three years. But small boat crossings reach their highest number this year. So what does this mean for Rishi Sunak? The SNP launches its manifesto, putting independence and the NHS at the forefront. And from Munich to Cologne, the Tartan army hope a new city will recharge Scotland's chances at the Euros. Join me for those stories and more at 6.30. Thanks, Lucrezia. Right, uh, some sport now. And Leeds Rhinos have announced that uh, boss Rowan Smith has left the club by mutual consent. He joined the Rhinos in April 2022 and steered them to the Super League final in that season. But last weekend, they lost their seventh game of this season, leaving them outside of the playoff positions. Well, the chief executive, Gary Hetherington, says it was disappointing to lose Smith, but that the results and performances this season haven't met expectations. Well, it does promise to be an emotional evening at Headingley on Friday night as the Rhinos play what will be their first home match since the death of their former player and icon, of course, Rob Burrow, from motor neurone disease. Well, it also happens to be Global MND Awareness Day and the players will be wearing a special shirt designed by an artist from Richmond. Yes, Kath Muir was diagnosed with motor neurone disease ten years ago, but thanks to well, what is some cutting-edge technology, Kath can still continue to paint. Chris Dawkes has been to meet her. Motor neurone disease has robbed from Kath Muir the use of her legs, her voice, but not her creativity. Where once she used a brush to produce artwork like this, Kath now paints with her eyes. Two years ago, I was unable to hold a brush, so started a long job of learning how to use my eye gaze to paint. I gave up many times but eventually succeeded. Last year I did a calendar and sold 300 racing to under half thousand pounds for MND. 
boredom is the one thing that people who have disabilities such as this, if you're in a wheelchair or, or can't do anything, is the thing gets to you. But this shows that if the brain's working and the eyes are working, the technology's there, you can do something still with your life. Kath was so inspired by the friendship between the former rugby league player Rob Burrow, who was diagnosed with MND in 2019, and his former teammate Kevin Sinfield. Last year she painted this image and gave it to Kevin during one of his fundraising challenges. I saw this this morning, that was brilliant, thank you very much. Am I right? Yeah, thank you, thank you. You know, when you receive gifts like this, they're so special when you realise the time and effort that I've gone into creating it, and it was a wonderful drawing that had taken Kath nine hours to put together. Rob made such a big difference to the MND community. Since his diagnosis, he bravely came out and told the world about his diagnosis with MND. Suddenly, people were learning about this horrendous disease that takes everything from you. Friday night's game between the Leeds Rhinos and Lee will be the first at Headingley since Rob passed away early this month. It's also Global MND Awareness Day. The players will wear a one-off special shirt designed by Kath and featuring her artwork. To see the players wearing the top I designed will make me feel very proud. I hope lots of the shirts are sold to help make money that will go towards the Rob Burrow Centre for MND in Leeds. Kath herself has raised almost £100,000 since her diagnosis 10 years ago. First it was physical challenges like a coast-to-coast -coast tandem bike ride with her sister Ruth. Now it's these wonderful paintings. And as Rob said in his final message, and Kath will testify, in a world full of adversity, we must still dare to dream. Chris Dawks, ITV News, Richmond. It's of great how Rob Burrow has been an inspiration to so many people. And of course we wish Kath all the very best. Some great art there. Now then, uh, on to some sport. And Leeds triathlete Johnny Brownlee has been left out of Team GB's squad for the Olympics. He and his brother Alistair have dominated the sport in the last decade, winning five Olympic medals between them. But neither will compete in Paris this summer. End of the Brownlee Olympics era. Sam Dickinson took the second men's place in the squad ahead of Johnny. Well, from the end of an era to the start of an era, it's called summer, you know. It's almost on as the longest day. You are joking. I, Already? I think I saw the sun this morning. I mean, the lawnmower was out, <laughs> but it didn't do anything. I, but spare a thought, actually, for the, for the folk in our region who turn out each weekend trying to keep grassroots sports alive. They've had a nightmare. They certainly have. They've faced a horrible few months with the wet, 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 the wet winter, first of all, and then, of course, spring leading to waterlogged pitches and thousands of cancelled matches. It has been terrible, hasn't it? Well now, there's a warning that our familiar foe, climate change and even more extreme weather, well, it could threaten the future of our local sports clubs altogether. Catherine Walker has this report. This winter has been one of the wettest on record and it's caused significant disruption for Halifax FC women. Flooded pitches have limited game time, leaving players struggling to catch up. We, we lost our ground around Christmas time because of the weather. From our match day point of view, yeah, it's, it's, it's had a massive impact on on us being able to play our fixtures and us being able to, um, you know, compete at a high level on a, on a good surface. But yeah, the weather's been horrendous and it, it continues to be. Scientists predict the UK will start to see wetter winters more often due to climate change. And now new research shows this extreme weather is having a direct impact on people's activity levels in our region. Figures from Sport England show that two-thirds of adults in Yorkshire and Humberside have done less sport due to extreme weather, with a quarter finding it less enjoyable. Three out of ten people think it could have a negative impact on their activity levels over the next five years. It's undeniable that the impacts of climate change in the storms, floods, droughts and heat are disrupting grassroots sport now and pose a significant threat for, for the long term. You know, the statistics um, there that 62,500 grassroots football matches were cancelled or postponed last year because of climate change. So it's extremely, extremely worrying. Access to sport is important for our physical and mental well-being. And without investment in infrastructure, climate expert Anika says it's those who need their local clubs the most who will be hit the hardest. Drainage infrastructure needs to be there to drain rainwater as fast as possible after prolonged rainfall. 
and also more options for indoor activities when outdoor activities are impossible. Otherwise, those who only have access to grassroots sports will not have any op app option at their disposal. Whether it's flooded pitches or extreme heat, climate change and sport are intrinsically linked. And grassroots clubs are worried that postponements and cancellations will become a regular part of their fixtures. Catherine Walker, ITV News. You've actually had a nice day today. Now we're showing pictures of the horrible <laughs> rain again. Oh dear me, just Can't cheer escape. us up. <laughs> now then, shall we have a little trip to Shaky Wakey for our final story? Let's do it. Yes. Well, did you know that Wakefield, birthplace of Henry Moore and Barbara Hepworth, is launching its bid to become the UK capital of sculpture? Well, key to that, of course, will be the Yorkshire Sculpture Park. Uh, our cameras have been behind the scenes as a major new exhibition prepares to open there. Yes, it's called the Alchemy's Exhibition. It opens to the public this Saturday. It's been created by one of the world's leading female contestants contemporary artists and celebrates diversity and personal discovery. Sarah Clark went to find out more. It's a place to admire and enjoy some of the best and most dynamic outdoor sculptures the world has to offer. The Yorkshire Sculpture Park in Wakefield is one of the leading centres for modern and contemporary art. Barty Kerr is to exhibit her life's work in a New World exclusive collection called Alchemies. It's very exciting for me. Yorkshire Sculpture Park has been a sort of icon for many artists. Um, a lot of my contemporaries and peers who I admire have shown here. I'm primarily a sculptor uh, and this is one of the largest sculpture parks in Europe and I'm really excited to be here. And there are so many other women artists and sculptors who've worked here. There's outside, you'll see Nikki de Saint-Fal, you'll see Barbara Hepworth, amongst many, many other women. But his work centers around the female form and highlights issues around identity and gender. Using glass, wood, plaster and bronze to create her mythical characters and empowering statues. Primarily, what I'm looking at is the sense of the body. I also make what I call these sort of urban goddesses who are really about the potentiality of what we as women can be if we allow our bodies and our imagination and our thought to become bigger than ourselves. Working with Barty Care has been a dream for a number of years. She's an extraordinary artist, one of India's most important artists and frankly it's a real privilege having her here at Yorkshire Sculpture Park. It's just fantastic seeing how female artists are really standing up to the mark and making the most incredible work. And this year we're really platforming a number of very important female artists, actually on artists who aren't so well known, so bringing those voices together in this incredible environment. Overseeing the logistics and installation of the 33-piece collection is Adrienne Murray-Neal. I think it's a great example of what the Sculpture Park can do and what we can achieve. We've been working on this for quite a while now and we've had shipments by sea from India, we've had works from the US, works from the UK, France, Switzerland and from China as well. So kind of pulling all that together logistically is quite complex. Over 300,000 art enthusiasts visit the Open Space Gallery each year, which sees sculpture and nature complement each other in 500 acres of parkland. It was so beautiful. I, I think so. In North Carolina, I have an arboretum that is pretty world class, but this is very, very nice. Yeah, this is nice. Very different yes. than anything yes. that I've been to in California. And we have many, many museums and things, but nothing like this. It's an amazing space, truly wonderful space, and to have the ability just to wander around the grounds and see so much modern art where you can't see it in this sort of environment is just a tremendous place to be. Over 1,000 artists from 40 countries have showcased their work across the gallery's 45-year history. And with the new exhibitors and emerging talents, staff hope the adoration for this spectacular place will continue to rise. Sarah Clark, ITV News, Wakefield. Terrific stuff. And you can see more behind the scenes at the Sculpture Park on our streaming service. Uh, that's ITVX. Just scroll down to the news section and select view all and then choose calendar as your area.
Yes, good old uh, sculpture park there. You know, it is certainly one of the jewels in Wakefield's crown, don't you think? And it doesn't get as much attention, perhaps, as some of the other places, you know, on the East Coast. So, especially if the weather's getting better, we'd like to think. Mm, yeah, somewhere to reckon? visit. <laughs> what do you reckon James Wright can tell us? Good visibility on the horizon. TUI sponsors ITV Yorkshire Weather. Hi there, good evening. After a bit of a slow start with a lot of cloud around today, we've all seen a bit of sunshine through the rest of Wednesday. As far as the weather over the next few days, we've got a bit of a change in the jet stream. At the moment, it's taking this huge dip down towards North Africa. That's quite unusual, and it's partly triggered by the heat waves in the USA. That is going to sort of uncoil slightly, eventually push a little bit further north. That puts us on the warmer side of the jet stream and also gives us a ridge of high pressure right the way up from the Azores. So hopefully some proper summery weather into next week. Back to tonight, plenty of clear spells and clear skies around, light winds, and that could give us a little bit of mist in one or two spots. Uh, rural spots might also get below uh, double figures. So one or two cooler places, but generally we're looking for a mild start to the day tomorrow. So we will see some high cloud around, making the sunshine a little bit hazy. But on the whole, I think from the get-go, we're looking at a generally brighter day than today. And with a more definite west-southwesterly breeze, it should keep the sea breeze out at sea. And as a result, temperatures higher than today, highs of 22. Tui sponsors ITV Yorkshire Weather. Hello Summer, Piri sponsors ITV Pollen Count. With more sunny, warm weather on the way, bad news for pollen sufferers. We're going to see more uh, very high counts over the next few days. That's for grass and for weeds like nettles, dock and plantain. Have a good evening. Thanks very much indeed to James. All boys together tonight. Boom, boom. Nice to see you, John. You uh, must pop in again. You exist in real life. I've only seen you on telly. <laughs> likewise. Likewise. Oh, at the end of some link somewhere. Some remote place. Some remote place, yeah. Yeah, nice to have you. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm sure normal service will be resumed shortly. Anyway, I'm back tonight at 10.30 after the news. Lucrezia is next. We'll see you later. Have a good evening. Good night. Thanks for watching.